Today, we're gonna to take a look at how you can use XML files in Final Cut Pro X. Hey, what's up guys, this is Marcos, and in this channel, I create Final Cut Pro X tutorials. So if you're into this kind of stuff, you use Final Cut Pro X, then subscribe right now so you don't miss a thing. And hit that little bell button, that way you get notified when I upload a video. So let's jump straight into the material. XML files is something that um, you might see with Sony cameras. If you're a Sony user, you understand that every time you go into your folders to get your, look at your footage, there's these XML files that are created. Well, I'm not talking about those. I always delete those. I don't know why Sony creates those. I wish I could turn them off because I don't ever use them. The XML files I'm talking about is something that's built into Final Cut Pro X, and I'm gonna show you exactly how I use them and in different ways you can use them. The first way I use them is with client projects. I shoot corporate video, and whenever I get home, I always back up my footage to at least two or three drives it's better to have three uh, just in case one of the drives corrupts you want to have your footage backed up so what i do every time i when i always use one drive to edit and the other two are just uh on the shelf in case this one fails the one i'm editing on because if the, if it does uh then i have that footage to work off of right uh, but every time i'm working on a, on a client project at the end of the day i always export an xml file of that project I'm working on. The reason being is that if I come back and that drive that I was editing on gets corrupted or I lose it or whatever might happen to it, I have the XML backed up to uh, cloud storage somewhere, usually to my Google Drive. That way I can retrieve the project I worked on because with that XML, I can take it and transfer it to my other hard drive and it will automatically bring up the project I was working on. So even if that original uh, drive that I was working on, the whole project, everything I did, all the edits, those don't get lost because I exported an XML. So it's a way to back up yourself, to back up your work, your project, because you're gonna be putting in a lot of hours into your, into your projects, and you wanna have that uh, peace of mind that if anything happens to this drive, all the edits that I've done are not lost. The second way I use XML files is whenever I'm collaborating on a project, usually with, when I'm editing uh, wedding videos for a friend of mine, he has a wedding videography business and sometimes uh, he gives me work and I edit his weddings. And what he does is he creates also backups like I do. And in order for this to work, the file structure has to be the same in all the hard drives. So just remember that you can't just uh, create the folders however you want. The folder structure has to be the same. So he creates different backups with the different, with the same, I'm sorry, with the same folder structure. And then he gives me one drive and I work on the edits. And when I'm done with the edits, I can export the XML, email it to him, and he, could, he can pull up all the edits I've done. And then he can um, export the video he wants to. So that's another way. Whenever you're collaborating, uh, you can just do that. Just export an XML and the other person you're collaborating with can open that XML and they can see all your edits and the changes you've done. So those are the two reasons I create XMLs. The first one being when I'm working on client projects and I just want to have the peace of mind that my edits are not lost in case that editing drive I'm working on uh, gets corrupted, lost or stolen, whatever it might be. The second is when you're collaborating on projects and you got two different or three people working on the same project you can share your edits that way and each, each person can pull up the edits on their own hard drive. As long as the video folder structures and the assets are in the same folders, just remember that. So now I just wanna quickly show you what it looks like in the computer and how to export an XML. Here we are in my desktop and here, as you can see, I have two drives connected. I'm gonna open the first drive, which is the D drive. Uh, it has here a project I'm working on. It's called Linda's Commercial. And it already has a project. I already created the project. It has the audio, the video footage, and a logo down below. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this folder over to my secondary drive. That way we can have an exact replica. So let's, uh, let's use Magnet to align our folders. I'm going to open the secondary drive. And I'm just going to copy this folder over to the... To the um, secondary external hard drive. All right, let me drag it over. It's gonna take a couple minutes, so I'll be right back. There we go. We copied over the the folder from this drive to this other one, and everything's there. 
Now I'm going to disconnect this drive because this is our secondary one. Or if you're, like I said, collaborating on a project, you can give that secondary drive to someone else and make sure you make a third one that no one's touching, right? So let's say this, since this is my primary drive where I'll be editing, I open up this project. All right, here we go. And this is the project I'm working on. Let's say I make a couple of changes. If I start making changes, I change the music or the text or the imagery or whatever it might be then it's not going to be the same as in my secondary drive. So how do I share these changes or how do I prevent uh, me from losing this, this changes if, let's say, this drive were to corrupt next time? Well, you click on the project, right? This is a project I'm working on. You should go to File, Export XML. And ideally, you want to save this to your Google Drive or your Dropbox, wherever you want. That way it's on the cloud. You won't lose this XML file. So we save this XML, we're exporting. Now what I could do is take that XML and I could, let's see Google Drive, I could take this XML and email it to uh, a friend I'm collaborating with if we're working on a wedding, because usually that's the case, and they can see all my new edits. Or I, if, like since it's sitting here on my drive, on my Google Drive, and it's it's backed up to the cloud. If anything happens to, to this G drive, I can always take this XML and bring it over to my secondary drive, the other, uh, the the one that has a copy, and it has everything the same, everything the same place, the footage, the audio in the same place, and I can open up the XML and it will bring up my edits. One last thing, I just want to show you how to import an XML. So what I did here, I actually renamed this. I called it second draft. It's a good idea. Uh, let me open this up. Let me open up the project. This is our secondary drive. I'm going to open up the project. And here's something you're going to see right now. You might get this error, missing files. That happens very often, even though the, the location of the files are, are in the same place. What you can do is just select them all, go to File, Relink Files, Locate All, and go to the original folder. It's, in this case, it's our Seagate 4 terabytes, Linda's Commercials, Choose, Relink Files, there it is, everything's back up and running. Uh, the next thing is uh, to, oh, bring up the new XML, right? File, import, XML. And again, let's go to Linux Commercial. Let's find that XML. Well, actually we didn't drag it. Uh, it's still in our Google Drive. It's this one second draft, import. It says the XML document second draft Linda's laundromat is about to replace existing items with matching names in the library. Uh, you can say replace, uh, or you can say keep both. I want to see the second version of it. And it renamed it to Linda's laundromat one. So this is a new one we just dragged in. And there it is. So that's a, basically how you collaborate with projects. That's, I often do this with... Like I said, with weddings again, let me repeat that. Usually that's where I do the collaboration. Or you can just do it for yourself if you're working on, on big client projects and you just want to have some kind, of, some kind of backup. So I hope this makes a lot of sense if you're a Final Cut Pro X user. Uh, I usually don't create XMLs for my YouTube videos because these are tend to be very short. I can create them in a couple days or sometimes in a single day and I uh, usually don't need backups, backups of them. So please let me know if you have any questions I wasn't clear about or anything, ask away in the comments section. If you like this kind of stuff and you wanna see more of it, please let me know as well. Give it a thumbs up if you found it useful. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next one.